Hey world, it's been when to come back to another video. It's another beautiful day here in H Town, guys. Uh, January the twentieth, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Day. All right. Uh, of course, you know his birthday was uh, January the fifteenth, but the holiday uh, is uh, today, which is January the twentieth, which is a national holiday. A lot of things are closed, but I'm going to come back this. Uh, Look food for thought to kind of address some historical facts about MLK and some of the historical facts about the person named Martin Luther because see there is a difference, right? Martin Luther King Jr. I mean he wasn't named Martin Luther uh, until he was five years old. Okay, he was born uh, Michael King. His dad um, also changed his name. So at the age of five, Martin Luther King Jr., which was born Michael, his father as well as himself, uh, changed their name. He changed their name to Martin Luther. And he changed their name because of the guy, uh, there was a, Protest a German Protestant guy uh, back in the 1500s named Martin Luther. He actually was the guy who kind of initiated the Protestant uh, Reformation. Uh, there are like 40,000 uh, Christian denominations, and it all be, kind of began uh, back in that era. And uh, on a side note, like say Martin Luther uh, was actually the guy who, you know, wrote something called the 95 Thesis, and he basically was, you know, criticizing what at that time was the Roman Catholic Church. See, his whole doctrine kind of, you know, hmm. It's kind of it's kind of lies behind the notion that in order to you know get into heaven, you must accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you know, and accept Christ, and then from that particular acceptance, you know, salvation or justification, it leads you to pretty much transform into a person where you basically start you know becoming a good person, you know, while you know. Prior beliefs, you know, it's like if you're a good person and you're a good person all your life, then you will go to heaven. Well, according to Martin Luther, in order for you to go to heaven, was well, you needed to accept Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, and then, of course, transform into the person that eventually you'll be judged into getting to heaven. He wrote, like I said, something called 95 Thesis. And this was basically something that uh, Martin Luther King Jr.'s dad uh, kind of admired. And that's why his name was changed, all right? And if you don't care, if you don't know pretty much Martin Luther King Jr.'s deeds, uh, he did more than just, you know, have to have did that have a dream speech. You know, he also, uh, like I say, was the leader of something called the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. He was the president of that. He wasn't necessarily uh, a reverend of a particular church. You know, he pretty much was kind of over the Southern. A Christian leadership conference, right? And under the civil rights movement, you know, he went to certain places to, you know, like I said, there was a boycott in Montgomery, Alabama. Uh, there was the, uh, he attempted to try to segregate uh, Albany, Georgia, which wasn't successful. And then, of course, he did, he led a nonviolent movement down south, which, uh, you know, individually, you have to ask yourself as an Afro-melanated person, you know, after what, 60 years or 50 years, you know, have the conditions of Afro melanated people improved since then. All right? I mean, you know, there was, that's a lot that hasn't happened. I mean, looking at it from an economic, education, you know, a political standpoint, I mean, even just from entertainment, you know, have, this, have the condition changed since the quote unquote civil rights movement and Martin Luther King Jr.'s uh, influence on that. All right? And, uh, you know, historically, me personally, uh, I think things are worse. You know, I mean, if you just look at the number of, you know, of, uh, of Afro-Melanated people who's incarcerated, uh, you know, you look at the, you know, the, the lowest economic uh, demographic of people and in the, in the areas they live in. I mean, you know, when you talk about regenification, you know, you're talking about certain groups of people being pretty much priced out of where they used to live, and that's pretty much been happening in predominantly Afro-Melanated uh, communities. So you really can't say that the conditions have really improved, you did, you know, since then. 
And it's kind of crazy because, you know, if you think about, and that's why I think it's important to have some type of political uh, literacy, all right? Because if you go all the way back to 1865, when the uh, they passed the... Uh, <laughs> 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment. Remember, the 13th Amendment uh, abolished slavery, all right? The 14th Amendment, you know, granted African-American citizenship. And then, of course, you know, the 15th Amendment granted African-Americans the right to vote. So if these were pretty much, you know, you know laws on the books in 1865, why would 100 years later in 1965 would... Martin Luther King Jr. have to advocate for civil rights. Civility was supposed to be addressed in the 14th Amendment. You did? So you just ask yourself the question, you know, is the situation better? And like I said, do your research. I mean, like I said, his name was Michael King from birth to the age of five. Uh, the reason, you know, the person he was named after was a guy by the name of Martin Luther, who was a German Protestant uh, priest who pretty much was the leader or initiated the Protestant Reformation, why, and that's why we have so many different denominations of Christianity right now, right? Because uh, he felt like in order to get to heaven, you had to go through Jesus, while back then the Roman Catholic Church felt that, you know, if you could, you know, uh, just confess your sins and do what they call pay indulgences, See, you will pay money, and the Roman Catholic Church will grant you something called an indulgence, which will be a certificate, which will actually, uh, you know, pretty much save you, you know, uh, have you have your salvation saved uh, by paying money. And that was the biggest problem that Martin Luther back then had and that he addressed, and that was the biggest split while the Roman Catholic Church kicked him out of the area where he was. So do your research, fam. I just want to come back with a little food for thought. Uh, fam, I really appreciate you guys. Uh, liking the videos, sharing the videos, and subscribing to the channel. That's a very humbling experience. And in the meantime, between time, and the most high side of being joy and being with his out of 5,000.